it was amazing being able to see um, all the best players in that. I think I remember seeing Cristiano Ronaldo when I was like 12 or 13. Sorry. He was like, he was like glowing and my mum saw him and my mum like nearly dropped out, down. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I was like steady mum, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today on the inside, we've got Lawrence Wyke. Uh, bro, how you doing? Doing good. Happy to be on the show. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, man. Um, for the people that don't know about you, just give us a brief introduction on yourself. Uh, so um, I played in England uh, at Manchester United Academy. Uh, I got released at 16. Uh, from there, I went to a school called uh, Repton School. Uh, I, did, I wasn't quite at the level, I don't think, to play high-level youth team football. I didn't really want to go and play kind of a League 2 team in England. So um, I went and got my education, studied for my SATs. And then from there, uh, I got the option to go to America. Um, I went to a uh, division three school in America. Um, I applied late, kind of that was the option that I had the best option. I went there, loved it, uh, and then moved to a D1 school and that's how uh, me and Leroy crossed paths, uh, playing against each other in the Southern Conference. Uh, and then from there, um, managed to get a USL contract, uh, similar to Leroy, and then uh, got a little lucky, worked hard and got bumped up after a year to the first team at Atlanta United. That's good, man. Uh, let's wheel it back a little bit. Um, how you been doing with quarantine and stuff? Obviously, not having any fans and like just having to train without knowing when the season was going to start again. Yeah, it's been really tough. We had a period where we had, I think we spent two months in the apartment kind of working on the them Kaiser bikes, uh, doing stretching and Zoom calls with the team, like Zoom workouts. It wasn't really the same. Uh, now it's a little bit better. We're kind of just training and then playing games every three days. Um, no fans, so it's a little bit tough. Um, but I mean, at least we're able to play, you know, and do something. So don't mind in that aspect. Yeah, for sure. I Let's uh, roll it back a little bit and go back to where it all started. So did you um, start at Manchester United? When, how old were you when you started at Manchester United? So I was seven years old. Um, they kind of do these little satellite centers where they invite uh, loads of kids and then kind of you train there for kind of six months to a year. And then they, I think you can only sign a player when they're seven or eight. So I think I signed at seven or eight, not really sure which one it was. Uh, but originally I played for a little local team in Bolton uh, okay. called e Eagley Rangers. Nightmares. Uh, played there for a, a year or two years and then managed to get that jump up. Yeah, how did you find it coming to, coming up through the ranks at Manchester United? It was incredible, yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of players say this, but I took it for granted because I was there for so long. It was the only thing that I kind of knew. Um, yeah, eight years old, it was obviously crazy just to be around there. We trained at um, uh, the cliff, it's called. That's so where all the old Manchester United greats used to train. And then obviously they moved the training ground to Carrington. So then we ended up uh, training there from 12 or 11, I think, to 16. And then obviously the youth team and the first team all trained there. So it was amazing being able to see um, all the best players in that. I think I remember seeing Cristiano Ronaldo when I was like 12 or 13. Serious. He was like, he was like glowing and my mum saw him and my mum like nearly dropped out, down. <laughs> you know? I was like, steady mum, you know? <laughs> 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 nah, I hear that. Is there any other people that are like people you grew up with that are still like there now or like? Yeah, uh, so Scott McTominay, I uh, played with him, um, you know, my whole career at Manchester United. Um, my mum sent me videos a couple months ago. Of, it was my like 12th birthday party and they were all in the back garden. It was uh, him, um, Oliver Rathbone, who's at Rochdale, and then Sam Hart, who's, who's at Blackburn. Um, and then Jack Harrison, obviously, who's at Leeds now. Um, and then a couple of the other lads. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Cameron Balfour Jackson, um, I'm not sure where he's at now, but he's been doing well. And then obviously, Marcus played the year up. He played with us, oh, okay. Marcus Rashford. So yeah, he, he played on the wing for us. Um, so yeah, there was, there was loads of them. I forget Dean Henderson, too. I mean, there were so many um, that that you know um it was a very high quality group yeah yeah like did it obviously it's hard to stay in an academy like that like throughout the ranks um how was like the training was it like high demand like once you realize like maybe let's say around like 13 14 15 when it gets 
kind of serious. Yeah, um, it was, honestly, it feels so long ago that it's so hard to remember about them younger yeah. years. But yeah, it was very technical based, like training from what I remember over in England compared to what it's like in America, which is a different topic. It's completely different. We, I mean, we did lots of technical elements, lots of skills, but it was, it was very demanding and it would, the speed was so high, especially at such a young age. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I feel like I could run all day and never got tired and I could touch my toes back then, you know, so it wasn't <laughs> too bad. <laughs> nah, that's true. So let's roll it down. Um, unfortunately, you didn't get your scholarship. So like, how was that transition? Because there's a lot of kids that go through that um, in terms of they get to 16, they don't get the scholarship. They're now like, what do I do? Like, how did you take that kind of period of time? Yeah, I, I found it pretty tough. And uh, Manchester United did it pretty well, I think. They were, they were pretty uh, good with me. They told me a little bit before uh, the end of like under 16. I think they told me at the start of under 16 like that I was not going to get a scholarship, which, you know, is it's harsh on you. But in the end of the day, it allows you to have the opportunity to kind of get other things on the table, you know, and get moving. Um, yeah. They told my parents. My parents told me a couple of weeks later because... I think we played Bolton Wanderers um, like a, a short time after, you know, um, they told my parents. So I played that game and he played me and I did okay. But um, ultimately, I mean, I knew it. And when I look back, I wasn't really ready. You know, I was quite small. I still hadn't really, you know, had a, my growth spurt, you know. And, you know, I just wasn't good enough, I don't think, to be honest. Um, so from there, I kind of, I was upset because it was the only thing I'd ever known. It was kind yeah. of... I felt a little bit lost, you know, like that's, that's, that's my whole life. That's been my identity, uh, you know, like on and off the field. So I was like, what do I do now? Um, so yeah, it was, it was tough. How, um, how come you didn't look at going up to another academy, like to do a scholarship there? So I originally, I was at Rochdale. I went down to Rochdale. Um, I actually went to Preston before that and I played at Preston and an absolute stinker <laughs> of a game at right back. Well, I don't mind admitting it. Um, and I was just thinking, I mean, I don't, I didn't really, I didn't really, I wasn't really invested in the game that much, to be honest with you. Because yeah. I knew I had a brain. I did well in my GCSEs. Um, so I was just kind of humming an hour and so I, asked Rochdale if we could do like a schoolboy scholarship. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, where you kind of go and do your education like separately and independently as opposed to kind of getting whatever uh. um, like the scholarship program offers because it wasn't quite good enough. Uh, I didn't want to really do a BTEC or something like that. I wanted to actually get my A-levels. But they were being a bit funny with that. They were kind of, they liked me as a player, but I don't know how much they liked me. Um, so I had literally not many options at all, to be honest with you. Uh, mm -hmm. And then because Manchester United play kind of Tottenham and when they play Tottenham and Southern teams, they meet at Repton School, which is in Derbyshire, the Midlands. Okay. So um, Tony Whelan, the academy director at Manchester United, kind of thought it would be a good fit for me. Um, so he recommended it to my parents. I went down there and kind of that's how I got started with my kind of next step. Yeah. How was that experience and how was the setup there? Because I've never heard of anything like that. Yeah, it's kind of like, a, I don't know if you've heard of like independent schools football, ISFA. I know there's ESFA, which you probably know about, yeah, English yeah. schools football. Yeah, there's the ISFA, which is the independent schools, which is the other side. Oh, um, yeah. It's basically um, just like a, a big kind of, uh, a sm sorry, not a small uh, like football curriculum where it's like a bunch of schools around the England area. And um, it's like high quality. I mean, they offer scholarships to players to go there, so kind of got a uh, pretty big scholarship to go there, which was great. Uh, and then I kind of went to boarding school down there. Okay. Kind of lived away away from, yeah, my family for two years, um, which helped me actually adapt to America a lot easier. So I yeah. went down there, played football, you know, five times a week, kind of training like academy structure. And then I did my education, got my A-levels on the side and then did my SAT. So it kind of allowed me to um, do both, which I feel like the scholarship programs wasn't allowing back in the day i know that yeah, would yeah. kind of help help you now with your sats a little bit maybe but yeah it was just that was kind of the best of both worlds for me so i'm really happy that i did that no true how, how did the the thought of america come in did you always know when you started that school you wanted to go to america or was it like late on 
It was it was really late on actually. I was I was actually going to go to um, the University of Warwick or something and do a business degree because mm. uh, I I wanted to do that. My kind of my mind wasn't really in football that much. Uh, I had a stress fracture in my lower sixth year when I was seven, 16, 17. Um, so kind of after being released from United and then getting this fresh fracture in my back, kind of my whole mentality just completely changed. Yeah. Um, so after that, uh, I had a good year after that. So I was kind of then I was kind of, where do I go? You know, I've got yeah. my football over here and then I'm, my education's going well. Um, but I don't know how long the football will last. So I was getting further in the application process. I got accepted from Warwick, uh, you know, accepted from Durham and some of these universities. Um, but then when I actually thought about, you know, making that action and going there, uh, I kind of just, everything just like halted. I was just like, I don't, I don't think I want to give up football. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't think I can just stop like that. Um, you know, after doing this for so long and, you know, enjoying the game. Sometimes like, you know, in college you could get away with trying to press someone if it wasn't on, you know, because yeah, yeah. you, know, you could maybe steal the ball back. Uh, I wouldn't try and press you though, I'd probably leave you. <laughs> <laughs> we are, what are you taking?